Hello, David. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Where are you right now? Are you in Spain? I'm in Madrid, yes. Ah, Madrid. Lovely. Lovely. You know nice. Madrid? Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that city. It's great. Good. Good, good. Yeah. So, um, first of all, thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, how was Cannes? You were in Cannes, uh, right, uh, a few days ago. How was it? It was out of this world. It was the most magical night of my life. I, you know, we dedicated two years of my life to this movie and uh, and poured my heart and soul into it. And but you never know what the outcome is going to be. And so I and I I'd, I'd never been to Cannes before, and I'd never seen the film. So everybody else in the cast and and Baz and uh, you know everybody they'd seen the film, but uh, I I waited until can. So I was really nervous, and it felt like as the lights started to come down in the Palais, I felt this. My heart was pounding, and I felt like I was about to go on a roller coaster. And uh, and then the reception after the film and during the film, as people applauded and and just feeling the love in the room, it was. Uh, it was one of those nights where you just got to pinch yourself and, and, and go, is this real life? I feel just so grateful. Mm -hmm. And then Bas uh, grabbed the microphone and, and told the audience that he was so grateful to Ken for that yeah, love yeah. given to the film. Um, the film kicks off with a big opportunity from, from Tom Hanks' character to, to yours. Mm -hmm. Do you feel somehow the same with this movie? Do you think this is the big one for you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've never, I've never carried a responsibility like this before, and uh, and the fact that Baz gave me the opportunity to get to to um, explore this for those two years, and that was, um, yeah, and and now now feeling the reception of everybody, it, it definitely there's a lot of similarities that I feel. Hmm. Where was the the huge challenge for you? Was it the the dancing, the singing? Was it the psychological study of the character how was it yeah it was it was all of the above it was uh it was this uh, when i first began it, it it seemed like climbing mount everest it was this enormous uh task ahead and uh and so i just had to take it one step at a time the way that you climb any any mountain you know and and um and i i really some of the big things for me were that with elvis everybody either knows him or they have an idea of him uh, or, or they don't know him. I mean, some young people don't aren't familiar, but for the most part, if people do know him, they either revere him in a godlike status, you know, as this superhuman character, or there's this caricature of him and, and yeah. all these tropes and, and uh, mimicry that's, that's around him. And so none of that shows us the man. And so for me, it was about exploring And, and learning everything I could about his humanity. And, uh, and, and so getting to that at the core and then working from that place and finding all the specifics of, of how he moved, how he spoke and, and how he sang and, and his interests and his personality and, and how all those things evolved and changed over the years. Yeah, yeah. And how can a young man like you uh, from the 21st century relate to a character like Elvis, with, to, to his decisions, to his... Um, choices in life. I think that that's the thing is that there, there are with a, with any character, but especially with him, there's uh, there's these things that may seem very far from you. And so with him, there were things in the beginning that felt either I felt too small for them, or I felt that I, I, I had to find my way in. You know, like with certain things that I thought that I was far away from. When I started to learn more. I started to find the ways that I could personalize the things in his life. And, and, and there were, there were some that were these uh, wild similarities, like the fact that his mom passed away at the same age that my mom passed away. Uh, you know, we were both 23 when our moms died and, and both of our mothers were our best friend and the people we were closest to in this world. And so that was the first thing that clicked into me because I know what that type of grief feels like. Um, and I know with the void that it leaves in your heart for the rest of your life. Um, and, Uh, and, and there were many things like that that uh, that that would click in that would would be almost uh, supernaturally similar. But then there were other things that seemed further away, like how Elvis his magnetism on stage. And and so I I in the beginning thought, 
well, he's one of the most magnetic performers. He must never feel fear. And then I learned that he did feel fear and he had stage fright all the way through his career. And he was a very shy child. And so that then gave me permission to know that even though I'm feeling that fear, it's what he felt as well. And what did he do? How did he build a rapport with the audience? How did he affect them? And, and then it was studying those things and, and, and getting in, uh, in, into that, you know. Uh, okay, Austin, it's been a pleasure talking to it's you. Thank you very pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you.